Well, we're rolling. We're rolling, baby. We got a good one for you. We got a new sponsor this week. We've got our first ever song music special, and it's going to be a good episode. Roll the music. Jay, Rich, and Jerry, we're here with you. Trail Whispers podcast on a Thursday afternoon. Fun stories, chiropractic care, life's an open book, so sit back in your chair. We're walking down the trail of life, so come along with Trail Whispers Podcast, you can't go wrong. So, um, yeah, I wrote a song today. Speaking of the song, we got any feedback on the new intro song? Um, some people, yes, I have gotten feedback that it is much better than the previous better. song. Okay. Yes. So people seem to be like it. I guess leave us a comment, viewers, if you're out there and you would rather have the old song back, let us know. Or if you like the new song or if you have another suggestion or you would like to write a song for us, full disclosure... Um, we're not very technologically advanced. Some people would call us boomers, Jerry. Boomers. B double O M E R S. Boomers. And apparently, what it means is you're not very hip mm. or savvy. So, at least that's where I'm at. Do people use the term savvy ever. Boomers. Boomers. <laughs> Dude, that's a savvy sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very savvy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, we'll take that though. Yeah. You can take that as an insult or a compliment. I'm going to choose to receive it as a compliment. Yeah. So, um, we got a new sponsor this week. So, you wanted to open up with the song that I wrote because I told yeah. you we got a yeah. song. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet, so I'm excited. So, you it. said let's open up with it. But, sponsoring this segment is our brand new sponsor. I was in there this past week and a guy approached me and asked me if they could sponsor the pod. I said, sure. It was Menards. Really? Yes. Menards yes. is sponsoring yes. us. I have a larger scale, scaler, larger scaled, okay, more more large scale sponsor would be Menards. So, I don't know. I mean, do they have more than the Dollar General pop-up? Cases? That's true. That's true. I didn't think about that. Idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Menards is a great place because I go in the door and you can find anything you need. I'm in an aisle and there's five gallons of nacho cheese and I turn around and there's monkey wrenches right there. So <laughs> you really can't go wrong. I walked in the door and I saw a big bag of beef jerky ends and pieces. These are the ends and, and cut up pieces of, of Slim Jims that just didn't make the cut. There was some kind of damage and instead of throwing them in the trash or feeding them to animals or something, they decided, let's bag these up and feed them to a bunch of rednecks right outside of Massive, Ohio, <laughs> from the arts. And so, yeah, they're sponsoring this segment. And yeah, you know what's interesting about Menards is it's the only place locally that makes you feel like you're at Cedar Point. Yes, yeah. you walk through <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, gate, the, the revolving gate, like yes. with the counter on it. Yeah, you ever try to like slide by that or do it like multiple times? I just took no. I just told a guy who like tried to come back out and get a cart and like couldn't get back through the gate again. I was just like, isn't that the worst? And he's like, why? Why do they have these? Also, another thing that gets on my nerves about Menards is at the checkout, you are walking behind somebody. Oh, it's so weird. So, like, they're standing here like this. Yeah. And, like, they're checking, they're running stuff through the cash register right here. And you are walking behind them. This is probably more like your frame. You're yes. right there looking over their shoulder. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is so weird. But I even asked, like, why do they do it like It gets this? worse when they're having trouble and they put their glasses on and you reach around them. And you're like... <laughs> Let me help you type that in. <laughs> it's just strange. And so it's a strange store, catchy theme song, and they get you with those rebates. 
Eleven percent. They get everything. They get you. They get me. Well, they don't get me. Get me. But I always pick up the rebate form, and I'm like, I'm gonna fill this out. And then a week goes by. I never fill it out. Another week goes by. It passes the deadline. I'm like, ah, could have made thirty bucks on this rebate, but I didn't. Hmm. So it's just it's a miracle that that store is in. Like that they are building new stores and that it's still existing. There's some people because love it. You walk in there and it's like it's in a, it's all set up like in this giant circle. You're yeah. almost in a maze to find stuff. Like you said, nacho cheese, monkey wrenches, then it can be like toilet paper and like LED light bulbs. Mm -hmm. Red LED light bulbs. Weird. Or like you need drywall. And it's like, okay, if I walk in the lows, dry drywall is directly next to the exit. Yes. Because it's like they know this is heavy and they know you're gonna need to take this out to your car. Yes. You don't wanna mess around. Yes. You go to Menards, you go all the way to the back of the store, you say, hey, I don't see any drywall. Oh, drywall's out in barn four. You gotta pull <laughs> around back there to barn four and you pay for it up front and then they'll load you up when you get over there. Go stand behind the cashier. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird. So the thing I have had good luck with at Menards is they have a lot of weird things. Like I have a door in my pantry that's 20 inches wide. I couldn't find it anywhere, but at Menards, they had it. I ordered it online and it got there like, it was 50 bucks. It got there like two days later. Okay. For those of you that have never been to Menards and experienced it, I wanna just give the viewers a quick visual. So this would be an example of like, I'm, I'm the cashier. Do you wanna check out? Yeah, sure, I'll check. Okay. So You've walked your stuff there, and I'm just I put gonna, my I'm stuff just down on the belt. In, and I'm, like, I'm standing over here. I'm putting the stuff on the belt. I'm collecting it one at a time. Yep, slowly it's scanning over. it, putting it in. Yep, do, do, and do, then do, do, do. I'm walking behind because I gotta go. I gotta go down here to pay. I gotta pay down here. I just scanned over here. I put my stuff on the belt here, but I gotta go pay down over here. Okay, sir. Okay. Your total is fifty six eleven. Okay, I'll pay on this machine here. I stick my card in the machine, the receipt also comes out of this machine, okay? And then I can go. But what we haven't addressed is, why exactly <laughs> am I doing this right here? Here are my things, here are my, th okay. All right, okay, hang on, can you help me real quick? I'm having trouble. <laughs> yep, I swear yeah. that it was just something in my pocket. Yep, 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 okay, All right. good. So we've got okay. everything up here. Yep. All right, all right, we're going back through. Okay, I'll go ahead and pay for things and then we'll leave. That's and then I'll go get my rebate receipt on the way out the and door. And you won't fill it out? No, I won't forget all about it. It's super awkward. So if you've never been to Menards, we're glad to have them in as a sponsor. We're glad for them. We're super excited. If you excited. need a 20-inch closet door, yeah, go 20-inch interior door, 20-inch wide interior door, get you one. Yeah. They've, they've got some weird good deals on stuff, but if you can help it at all, that store is set up to, I've been there once or twice with my kids, maybe once, and kids are drawn to all the stuff, There's all so over the stuff. place. So much stuff, random stuff, that they almost make you believe you need to buy it. To toy sections, flashlights, random, random things. Yeah. Snacks, books, there's everything there. Yeah. I bought a set of kitchen knives one time I was in there. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> Went in there for something totally different. Came out with a, a his, history channel kitchen knife. Where did that even come from? It was on clearance. That's your dad's gene. He's I a know. big history channel fan. He's a big history channel guy. Yeah. He'd be proud. So. Well. So this segment. I wrote a song. So there, what happened was, viewers, I understand that reels are trash. Not like fishing reels, Jerry. There's something on a phone, on okay. social media. And so on YouTube, it was, la I, it was last night, Sunday night, I got home, I got stuff kind of straightened up around the house, made myself dinner, and I was like, well, I guess I'll, I'll go to bed. I need to, I wake up early Monday mornings, I'm gonna get some sleep here. And so, but I was like, I'm not too tired. So, I just had my phone, I opened up YouTube, I checked on our videos and comments and stuff, and then I clicked on the YouTube Shorts button, which is real, so it feeds you a video that's 45 seconds. 
and a video came up with a catchy song. And I was like, oh, it's a catchy song. I never really heard it before. And then all these videos came up with people remaking their own version of the song. And so I was like, that's kind of interesting. And so I'm driving around today and I'm like, this song stuck in my head. And I bet you I could make a version of the song. <laughs> so I did that. So this is the song. I've got a Bluetooth speaker hooked up here. So hopefully there's no copyright infringements. I don't think there is because everyone else was making it. Um, but if there is, our three dozen listeners, please don't tell anybody. Here's the song. I'm two days into college and I'm three lectures behind. There's this guy, let's name him Colin. He says he wants to be mine. But it doesn't really sit with me quite right because he doesn't really like the things I like. And I keep accidentally knocking myself out of my dorm in the middle of the night. I wake up kind of hired and I wake up kind of cold. And I wake up kind of tired but I'll just sleep in when I'm old. See, I don't like breaking rules but don't like doing it as I'm told. So I just float around and keep my head down and hope my... So this is the song. People say it's so relatable. It's, Im it's impressive. Catchy. It is catchy. I just want to make, I did not, this is not me singing this version. Okay. I was wondering. If okay. Yeah. So I wrote the song when I was driving. So what I would do is I would think, I would listen to the audio version of this and then I would think like, oh, that'd be a funny line to say. And then I would voice to text it real quick on my phone. So that's what I did. Is there one with just the music? There is. And so that's what I'm going to play and I'm going to sing you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna sing my version of the song. So give us the full gusto. Alright, I will do my best guys. I'm gonna try my best. Should we call Menards? And you can sing is this and Menards like a Menards record this on their theme song? Should we re record it on their voicemail for them? Why not? What time is it? Ten thirty? You think they're closed? Yeah, why don't you give them a call? Let's give Menards. They're a definitely call. closed. Well, because you never know, this could make a, a TV jingle. That's true. We well, could be famous. You would be famous, and I would be just a big fan of you being famous. Yeah, you give them a call. Uh, Menard's closed. Perfect. So we'll try to time this up. If you were calling your back to start, our store is closed. Our four hours are Monday through Thursday. There's no voicemail. There's no way there's a voicemail. It has to be a voicemail. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. No way. Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We are open at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday for your early Too bad we didn't shoot the podcast at 5 a.m. That we could call them first and then start doing it at that time instead of 9 on a Monday. It's 10.30 right now. Or check the status of our special order. See? Crap. No voice. No voicemail. All right. We'll get them next time. Okay. All right. Here we go. As soon as I hit play, I have to start singing right away. There's no introduction. Okay. So I'm going to get going right. here. I'm new to Trail Whispers and I'm nine episodes behind. There's these guys, Jay Rich and Jerry. They're just talking all the time, but it doesn't really sit with me quite right. They don't really like the things I like, but I keep accidentally hitting play and listening to them talk all night. I wake up kind of happy and I wake up kind of old. I realize these guys are funny, even though they're really old. I kind of like the ads they read, but I don't know how things get sold. I just hope these companies realize that they don't fit the mold. Everybody's telling me that they're doing so well I try to trust them honestly but find it hard to tell They need help, they need your help Like and subscribe, like and subscribe Tell yourself, say it out loud I'll like and subscribe right now I tend to forget they're still only quite new In a way it makes sense why they don't have the views They've got time It takes time All caught up on episodes, it was a funny, funny time. Those guys, Jay Rich and Jerry, they're so handsome, they're so kind. My friends tell me I'm crazy, say I take it way too far. Cause I told them that it's over, we can't listen in the car. I'm loving this new podcast and I think that it's the best. That last episode I listened to was better than the rest. There's just so much that they have to say and far too little breath. So I can't wait for more new episodes and we'll see what's next. Everybody's telling me that they're doing so well I try to trust them honestly but find it hard to tell 
They need help, they need your help. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Tell yourself, say it out loud. Oh, like and subscribe right now. <laughs> Woo! You like that, you huh? That is awesome. Yeah, good. Man, that's impressive. I had fun with it. Dude, that is seriously legit. Yeah. If you're out there and you have not unsubscribed, no, 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 subscribe, subscribe. Okay, subscribe. <laughs> you're, you're a boomer. I'm always confused. Unsubscribe, I think is yeah, it's golf game. Less is more. Yeah, I understand. But if you're, you're out confused. there and you know how to turn this into a reel, you need to do it. I think you I need to do it. Figure it out. You let the listener, someone out there, your friend um, Chris, that's got all the all the viewers. He could post it, dude. This would catch lightning on YouTube. You think so? I think yeah. it would. So the lyrics were, dude. That was so good. Some of them line up with the song a little bit, but um, how many times do you think you listen to that song? I don't know. Probably ten, fifteen times. Wow, it's that's, only, a, that's a gift. It's only like two minutes long. But yeah, I, what I would do is I would listen to a sentence of a song and then I would try to think of words that lined up with it. I knew the trail whispers and I'm nine episodes behind. There's these guys, Jay Rich and Jerry, they're just talking all the time, but it doesn't really sit with me quite right. Yeah, so I would just like... Dude, that is awesome. I yeah. love it. Yeah, but uh, my one of my favorite ones is... Um, I wake up kind of happy and I wake up kind of bold. I realize these guys are funny even though they're really old. <laughs> kind of like the ads they read, but I don't know how stuff gets sold. I hope these companies realize that they don't fit the mold. And I don't know, just, and fit the Dude. mold, fit the mold I got from the Chris Farley Bennett Brower. Oh, He's yeah. Like, I don't fit the mold. <laughs> I don't look comfortable on camera. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the news. If you haven't seen that skit, oh, dude, get on YouTube so and just funny. search Bennett Brower. B-E-N-N-E-T-B-R-A-U-E-R. -E -E it's a Chris Farley skit, Saturday Night Live from 1994. It's hilarious. Dude, so funny. But yeah, that's... Uh, I yeah, spent, he's like, I don't brush my teeth. He kind of goes down this whole thing and just kind of... I leave I leave dried up deodorant cakes under my arm for a week <laughs> at a time. I don't shower. I'm not the norm. Yeah. I don't smell good. I'm not camera friendly. Yeah, it's funny, <laughs> funny, funny. Dude, so, that's so good. That's the song. I texted wow. you today and I said, I got a song tonight. Dude, you need to, every Sunday night, you need to listen, you need to get some reels going and get some more parodies. Get another song? Another song. I think the viewers oh, are going to, they're going to crave this. Let's, okay, viewers. I'll this is episode, guys, what, 15? This is 16. 16. If, if we have two new subscribers and three comments referencing the song, I feel like that's fair. That's fair. Then I will... I'll do a song again next week. Or and even if you need a little more time, you'll do another song the next week or two. Yeah. That way you get two weeks. Yeah. But the way that my brain works with the ADHD stuff too is, uh, hang on a second, sorry. Um, but the way that my brain works is like when I have the idea for something, I'm focused in on it. Like that's all I'm thinking about. That's it's it. a good and a bad thing because it's like you lose focus on other stuff that's going on, but it's just like you can dial You're in. like a bloodhound. Kind of. But like that's how I was in college and in high school. Like I'd have a paper due and it would just be like night before. It's like, all right. I remember in eighth grade, I, I won the Patriots pen contest and I got a check for $250 in eighth grade. And what it was is you had to write an essay about um, the appreciation that we have in our society for veterans. And so it was the night before I wrote this thing, had to be three pages, double spaced, and I got the notification letter like a month later that I won it. And we're sitting no. at this dinner, my parents are there with me in Stark County, I was first place in the county. Wow. And my dad's like, yeah, he wrote, he wrote the paper the night before it was due. And the guy's like, I, I read all those papers. No one wrote it the night before it was due. And my dad's like, oh, okay. Like, 
you know, I'm not trying to argue with the guy, but I was like, but that's just how my brain, your brain is functions. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not your guy for details or for organization, but if we got to pound something out and we only got a few hours, you're the guy or like sticking with it. Like we talked about this before with projects, but I think that's important as a man too, that like, Hey, we're going to see this through the car will get fixed. The sink will get repaired. Like I was helping my brother-in-law Saturday night. He spent like all day Saturday working on his plumbing. And it's like, but that's what men do. When your sewer backs up in your basement, you spend the day in your basement. Did you want to do it? No, you didn't want to do it. Did you do it? Yes. Why? Because you are a man. That's what you You're do. You're right. You nailed it. That's what you do. You nailed it. So Podcast is over. All right, viewers. We'll see time. you next week. Peace. <laughs> oh, oh man. dude, that was so good. Yeah, that laser focus. Because I've seen you. We've written a handful of different songs and videos and things out there for our one, um, our old friend. Yeah, wow. we've done we've we've done quite a few. So I I know we've done stuff on a whim, like uh, Christmas shoes. Oh my goodness, dude! The we literally period. heard we heard that song on a Sunday night church service, and by Sunday night, I wanna buy these Wii's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that were buying Nintendo Wii's. That dude. was a good time. Yeah, you. I think you wrote that song in maybe an hour and a half. Yeah. And then we performed it. It's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. But anyways, um, yeah. Will you, uh, you grab me the root beer that's in the freezer? Yeah. You open up the door. I think we're violating, are we violating? Um, Your wife will be so disappointed. I got up from the table. I went over, got a coffee. She probably won't like the song. No, she's going to love that song. That's it. That's a. That's a In I case the cool. audio doesn't turn out well, I recorded it separately on my phone with the microphones that we have. So I can always put it at the end of the episode, too. So depending on how the audio, I might just put it at the end for you guys if you want to listen to it again. Dude, I'm pumped for that. All I'm right. glad to see that you're back for um, episode two. Yeah, this is me as a wood carving. So I'm falling apart. My kids dropped it a few times, missing a hand and both my feet. So it's kind of like the end stages of diabetes. <laughs> where you start losing all of your toes and uh, Here, your let's, extremities. Let's do this. Here, let's actually do this. So the viewers can see the larger body type, but also the water bottle. Yeah, maybe I'll get it close to the camera here for these guys. So yeah. basically, a guy I go to church with does wood carvings, viewers. And so... This is me on a Sunday walking into the church, and I usually have a water bottle in my back pocket, and so he put one in there. This is in my heavier days, as you can tell. Um, I weigh about 274 in this model here. <laughs> so I've since slimmed down to about 235, but I'm back, baby. We're back. You're back, baby. So that, yeah, that one's got to stay here, I feel like, for every episode at this point. That's a podcast podcast friend right there. Maybe you could get him to do an updated one with like, because you don't have diabetes yet. This is like future you. You've gained a lot of weight and you've lost your feet and your hands. I have peg legs and, <laughs> and hooks for hands. I'm like a pirate sailing the seven seas that is morbidly obese. So I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Dude, I, uh, you know, you see... Let me see if I can find this picture that I took because I wanted to talk about it. Um, you know, I am conservative. I just want to put that out there. You are. Me. I know. I know. Because you were a vegan for a stretch in your life. Who yes. Who before that year that you were a vegan? Yes. Uh, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, JK, JK. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure someone's offended. I'm sorry. But listen, and I'm not trying to... Do you think we actually have a Bernie listener? I don't know. Do you think your sister voted for Bernie? Probably. Probably. She seems like the tech twins. Liberal. She's going to want uh, the government's help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. But, um, you know, 
to say, just to say that to say, I'm not trying to convince you to have my views. That's not what this is. I'm not trying to argue with you. I don't want to argue with you. You've got your views. I've got mine. We're not going to change each other's minds, whatever. But what cracks me up is, and look, I vote conservatively. Okay. That's just how I vote. And again, everyone's got their own opinion. But it cracks me up the way people idolize Donald Trump. It just cracks me up. So I saw this post and it says this, the person posted this and I won't name this person, but they said, let no evil weapon formed against him prosper in Jesus name. I ask, amen. And then it's a picture of Trump sitting in a car and it says, strengthen him, Lord, send legions of angels to protect him. Father guard and guide his heart and mind, ease his cares and give him good rest. Give him your peace and wisdom. Cause his enemies to stumble and fall into confusion and panic. Give him energy and clarity. Amen. We should have said that prayer before we had bacon and cream cheese tonight. I agree. But it's like <laughs> he's on the way to a trial for hush money for illicit relationship with a female that has a shady reputation anyways. And like we're saying, let no weapon against him. Like, if in he's Jesus if, name. if he's the candidate, like I'm gonna vote for him. I'm not saying that, but all I'm saying is like, we don't have to spiritualize everything that someone is doing. Like, there's sometimes where you're just like, yeah, like I might pray for him, like you know, hey, you made a mistake. God help him, you know. Yeah. But like to say, like Lord, let no like he is essentially the weapon that was formed against him. Like, yes, in a way, yes. But it's, so it's like I don't mean to get political, but I was just dying laughing when there. I saw that. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, "Are you kidding me?" Like, I don't know. But we, as people, we have a way of like seeing everything we want as the right and true thing, and everything someone else wants as the evil thing. I'm just like, dude, that is a oh, funny post. Man. Funny, man, man, man. So shout out to that. Is that person a friend of yours on Facebook? Yes. Yeah. That's Shout out. Well, you usually only see your friends' posts. I know you're not familiar with social media no. in any way. No way. My wife will show me some stuff. Then it's, you know. Yeah. yeah I get it. Interesting. So, um, yeah. Anyway, sorry for leading with that. I guess I just kind of jumped right into my own stuff. But speaking of the federal government. Okay. We do a food bank at our church. Okay. And... It's a great ministry because we feed the hungry, right? People that need food, we give them three days worth of food. We also have clothing, we'll give them clothing. Like, it's a big help to people, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we get all the food from the City of Akron Food Bank. So we're an affiliate of the City of Akron Food Bank. So in order to get that status, we have to go have like testing done. People come in and evaluate the facility and the amount of freezers we have, food storage, all this different stuff. So we have whole room in the basement of the church dedicated to this with multiple okay. chest freezers and shelves and everything else, right? Great. And basically what, what happens is they send over a list of the food items and basically you pay for them at like a super, super discounted rate. Like meat is like 10 cents a pound. Okay. Wow. Like it's ridiculous, but it's all given from Giant Eagle. Basically what that 10, pence, 10 cents a pound is covering is like the transportation from the food bank to your facility. Mm -hmm. That's basically what they're trying to do. But so they list items and I'm going to grab an item out of the pantry because there was leftovers and um, my pastor was like, hey, you should take a bag of these for your kids. And so I did. But the federal government said, we're going to drop off cereal for you. Cereal. Right? Okay. And so when you think cereal, you're probably thinking Frosted Flakes, Shredded Wheat, Cheerios, Cocoa Puffs, Honey Smacks, all Something. of that. Right. But what you're not thinking is just the charms from Lucky Charms. Dude. The federal government is saying this is cereal. So food bank distributed. You can do more nutritious practice. You really can't. You have so, every food dye ever in, in there. there. Yes. And sugar. I'm not going to act like I didn't have a few 
on a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna act like I didn't enjoy a bowl of soup. Your your twelve year old self was just like was in right. heaven. Let's hope our blood sugar drops at some time in the next 48 hours so we can have some of these marshmallows. So oh, I just thought dude, that was that's fascinating. Funny. Like, this is so they packaged those up and said, here's cereal. This is cereal, yeah. They just told us we're going to be delivering, you know, 150 bags of cereal. How much did you pay per bag of cereal? That kind of stuff is usually free. Okay. I mean, it should be. Yeah, it's just it's trash, essentially. I mean, there's I no nutrition. I would that to my chickens. No, you wouldn't want to. That would probably go on fire. When we have our burn parties and we burn everything, I'd probably just, I'd probably start the fire and see what colors would. Your kids don't eat any kind of cereal? Every couple months we'll pick up some, like a box of cereal. One box. One box. And it's like the healthy stuff from Aldi's. Yeah. 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 Well, so different strokes for different folks. Yeah. I didn't get this big eating salads. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't no. lose my feet on accident. <laughs> yeah. How many so, bowls of uh yeah, the marshmallows. Just the mallows. Just Dude, the mallows. I would like to see the nutritional value of that with fruity pebbles. Oh yeah. Something like yeah. It'd be unreal. Total trash. So yeah, dude, what an interesting thing with that. I saw it was interesting. I was like, this is what the government calls cereal. Just because it's associated with cereal, they're like, oh, this is, we'll give this away. And now, a fascinating thing about the, the food bank ministry is, so that was what, Saturday? Uh-huh. So you have to explain the story. Um, I was talking with you about it a little bit before, but you shot me a polo before you went to the food bank. Remember I was telling you beforehand the kids happen to get the Oh, phone. yeah. Yeah, so there's a, just a funny story. There's an app called Marco Polo, right? And what it is is it's a video messaging app. And so what you can do, and I love it because I drive a lot. Yeah, I, perfect. I would rather talk to people on here than in a text message. Through text, you lose context and everything else. And so... This is, like you said, it's perfect. I would rather do this than text. I'd rather do this than call. You can reply whenever you're ready. You can see their facial expressions. It's great. Yeah. And so you and I will message. We don't message as much as we used to because we save a lot of our conversation yes. for the podcast, Yeah. which is interesting. It's an interesting way to live life of like, <laughs> oh, man, I'd like to talk to Jeremy about this, but <laughs> if I tell him now, I won't be able to tell him Monday night at 10 p.m. Yep. And so yep. the viewers will be disappointed. But anyway, so I was... Sh- We've changed our life for the viewers. We have, for you guys. So like and subscribe. Um, but I sent you a message. I usually send you a message to say like, hey, this week on the podcast, what do you think if we talk about this and this, mm-hmm. these segments or whatever? And so I was getting ready to go to the food bank. I had a really productive morning, Saturday morning. Like, felt real good. I didn't have my kids this weekend, which was a total bummer. But... It is what it is. And so I was like, well, I need to use my time the best I can. I want to stay busy. I want to be productive. And so I woke up that morning. I knocked out tons of laundry that needed done. I organized my kid's room, like purged out a bunch of old clothes that don't fit, made some like um, like things to organize stuff in their rooms and stuff like that. Did all these projects. Felt really good. And I was like, all right, food bank starts at 1030. Got to leave the house by 10, so I need to take a shower. So and I'm like, oh, I meant to message Jeremy this. So from the shower, I sent you a polo, but I had the camera positioned in a way where you could only see my face. So you're not like yeah. seeing my body. You yeah, might maybe hear a little upper torso region. My shoulders. You might yeah. hear the water running, but it's not inappropriate. Yeah. So you received the message on your end. Yeah, and I'm just listening to it on, sa- I think on Saturday, and... Of course, my youngest, who always is saying, you know, Jay Rich this, Jay Richie that, happens to pick up the phone and ask what you're doing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, all of the kids are mesmerized of Jay Rich shooting a pull. Why is Jay Rich shooting a, a video in the shower? Yeah, it didn't seem weird, but when I think about it in this context, <laughs> they're going to be like, I remember when my dad used to message this 
portly, middle-aged, bald man when he was in the shower, and they talked back and forth. <laughs> and people were going to be like, dude, your dad was a weirdo. So, <laughs> Who was his friend? What a freak. Jay Ritchie. Jay Ritchie was his friend. I remember that guy. He used to hang out every Monday night. So yep. like, whoa. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, dude, that was so funny. It made me laugh. They cracked me up. Dude, what a fun Saturday, though. Spend time doing the food bank, and I'm sh I'm sure that that's just a great time when you're giving back to people. It was, yeah, it was good. It was funny. Like, do you ever see people? Because you have a, I love your sense of humor. I could see you seeing someone that's like the younger version of you, a little bit heavier, a little bit husky, and are you just like, hey, buddy, I've been there, and you're just like, take ten bags of these bags of cereal. I've done things where I'm like. Hey, listen, you got kids at home? And the lady's like, yeah. And I was like, this isn't for the kids. This is for you. They got Reese cups in here this week. These are for you. Hide them in the car. Dude, what a go guy. hide them in your room. Don't let your kids get these, okay? Like, I'll do stuff like that for nice. people. There was this guy this week, and this guy is all about work. You ever meet someone like that where they only want to talk about work? Mm -hmm. Like, this guy was like, I got a job, yeah, I'm working over here, I got a job over here. And he's like, you look like a strong young man, you should get a job. And I was like, I've been meaning to get a job. <laughs> and he's like, you should get one. Bible says if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. And I was like, man, you know what, you're right. I'm going to go out and start applying for jobs. <laughs> he's like, I don't know why you don't have one. I don't know why I don't have one either. And my pastor's <laughs> like, don't listen to him, he's messing with you, he's a hardworking guy, he's... He has a job. He's never been without a job. And, like, I'm just messing with you. Dude, people. that's like, hilarious. I don't know. You look at me like I'm out here serving on a Saturday, and your first reaction is, you must not have a job. I'm like, dude, come on. Like, yeah, I don't know. Do I, am I that, like, ridiculous looking? Let me see your hands. Do you have calluses? Maybe that's what you saw. I don't really have calluses. <clears throat> I always thought my hands were small. But they're accurate. they're normal size. Average size. I think they're the same size as yours. Basically, basically, hey, you're, you're, you're a big you're, thumb. You're intense. You have a big thumb. Your hands thumb. are very tight. They are very tight, aren't they? Yeah. I I finally scheduled my appointment with the chiropractor. Do they call you they back? They actually called me back. Yeah, from our message last week. Dude, so that's awesome. Where do you yeah. go in? Dude, they didn't have any openings until the fifteenth of May. My well, wife scheduled weeks. ours today. I'll tell you if we'll be in the same time. 15th of May was when it is. So she's, yeah, she knows we have the podcast today. She sent me pictures of car, Jeeps. Is she buying a Jeep? <laughs> no, we, we needed to keep our minivan. Um, 15th, we are going to the chiropractor on 15th. What time are you going? Five. We're 4.30 to 5.30. No way. On Wednesday. <laughs> Boom. Yes. yes. That's awesome. We That'll be fun. There. Hey, viewers, we're going to record a special episode oh, we from need the to. office. We need to. We should see if we'll do like a quick interview. Just like oh, just what quick. got you in the chiropractor. So, to figure out something okay, funny. We, we, all, we come here to support this farce. Yeah. We just know how, much long long. Are you gonna, how much longer are you going to? How much are you keeping this up for? We've seen the nice <laughs> car outside. And you're a cult leader, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so what we maybe we can do is so we're in there at four thirty, so we should finish up and he's probably going right to you. That would be amazing. Dude, I, I gotta just I'll just see if I can room. why don't I get there at four thirty and just see if I can go in the appointment with the family. Oh, like dude, part of the, yes! Part of the family <laughs> It's just like, yeah. And the kids are just going to be like, looking at me all the time. He's not in the shower this time, Dad. You no, know, he's a normal guy, kids. He's a normal guy. Okay, so, yeah, because the family plan, we talked about this, and Brian's such a great guy. I mean, he could, he's told me before what some of these other chiropractors in other cities will charge for, like, a family plan. Dude. We wouldn't be going as a family. Yeah. It's unreal. But I don't think he sets a cap. So I could just say, hey, look, you know his story. He's fallen under tough times. He's part of our family. We've brought him under our roof. Yeah. We've adopted him. <laughs> he lives with us. He shares a bedroom with my son. 
He's a great guy. A great guy. Jay Rich, he kids, sleeps. it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> he sleeps in the bed. Rowan's got his floor bed. We're yeah, all is set. Is he still on the floor? He's still on the floor. Yeah. So, yeah. My sister's son is doing the same thing. He's doing it more so out of, we were talking about this, where he is learning to sleep in a bed, just getting, I think he's two, well, he's, yeah, he's a little over two now. So he's learning to sleep in a bed instead of a crib, but he can get out of the bed. So before they used to put him down for bed, put him in the crib, leave the room, he would cry himself to sleep if he was going to cry. Well, now he will bring himself close to the door and like look under the door to see like, see if they're walking past the door and then like call out like, mama, mama. Like, Aww. And so, yeah, it's a sad thing, but it's just like one of those things where he'll learn, like you have to go to sleep now. But he's been falling asleep on the floor in his room, and she's like, "I don't feel so bad." Jeremy said his son sleeps oh. on the floor, so it's oh. like, "Don't feel bad if you're out there." These kids are. It's so wild. Yeah, he's got like this. We actually bought the kids new mattresses recently. The mattresses we had were like really tall mattresses, so it was a little bit of a stretch. Like the kids were sleeping up pretty high on their bed frames, so we got okay. some smaller mattresses, a little bit closer to the floor. Claire, of course, you know, she's falling off the bed. The one night my brother's over, Jared's over, he got to experience, Claire, you hear this thump. She falls out of bed, and then we've got, you know, Rowan sleepwalking all around, delirious as can be, and then my wife is calling me, delirious as can be, wondering where I'm at, I'm at our dining room table. Mm. That's where I was when she was in bed, and that's where I was when she called. And I said, you get to see what happens. The zoo, the zoo wakes up. Your brother was over there. Yeah, we were just she called. She, yeah, and I was like, I, she's like, where are you? And I was like, just at our dining room table. Did she then come out and see you? Or no, no, she just, just delirious. What time of so, night was this? Probably like around midnight. Oh, okay. So it was a little bit later, but yeah. we were just hanging in. Yeah. Well, when you do but, wake up, like, anything's kind of alarming. Yeah. You know, I've done that before. Like you wake and you're not like in your full mind. You're kind of like hazy in your mind. And like you think things sometimes, or I don't know if this has ever happened to you where you've like, I, this happened to me a couple times in high school. I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning, got in the shower, got dressed for school, and then realized it was like three o'clock in the morning. You didn't look at like a phone or a clock. I mean, back then we didn't, I didn't have a phone. And so it was probably a clock in my room, but I was just like, it was dark when I wake up for school anyways, but for some reason I wake up and I always have to take a shower, get in the shower. I haven't done that as an adult, but I remember doing that a couple times. Dude, teens. that's wild. Yeah, that's so, wild. But yeah, you wake up or you, you hear a crash outside and you immediately think it's a villain when it's just Ricky the raccoon hunting around in the trash can. <laughs> so we got a segment later for our least favorite Northeast Ohio animals. That'll be exciting. Oh, yeah. So, I'm, dude, I'm pumped for our chiropractor appointment overlap. That's Dr. Gonna be B, if he doesn't listen to this episode, he's, he's going to be in for a treat. I need to send myself an email right now to, to change it on my schedule to be there at 4.30. Yeah, dude, that's going to be uh, so funny. Because what's going to be funny as well is, um, so when you go in the doors, do you normally go down the right hallway or the left hallway if you're facing the desk? Left. Left. You usually go down the right. Yeah, that's... We go down the one for the sheep, you're going where the goats go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So we're typically always the right, and it'll be the first door on your right, it's a family room. So yeah, just when you get there, you, you can just make sure they get you checked in and just explain what's going on. Just tell the ladies up front real quick, like, hey, I'm just gonna be surprising Dr. B. I can just meet you guys in the parking lot. Yeah, just all walking together. Hey, my. My adopted son's with us today. Or maybe like, get in a stroller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this. We can figure something out. We'll figure something maybe out. Maybe we could do this. I wonder if you walked in with my family, if they would think you're me. Hat backwards. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. Your kids would never go for it. Oh, no. They would just be looking. Your daughter, Sophia, would be so suspicious and, like, guarded. Oh. And the other kids would be laughing. Like, <laughs> that's what would happen. So, Dude, that would be funny. That would, would be, be funny. funny. Yeah. He, Brian rolls in, and you're just, like, you're acting like you're just the fam. 
Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll figure something out. That'll be fun. Maybe but, time. Yeah, that'll be cool. Um, do you want to hit our segment we talked about, or the one we've been talking about for a while that we need to do? You pick. I did the song. You pick the segment. I think this segment. Um, yeah, I think we need to do our Y two K segment. Is this sponsored by anybody? Yeah, this this segment is sponsored. Um, you know, when you think about Y two K, for some of you, we probably don't have many viewers. Do you think we have a lot of? View- yeah, we probably have a few viewers that were born after Y two K. Couple that were before Y two K, and there might be some actual boomers out there that prepped for Y two K. Our average listener is between the age of eighteen and thirty five. Is that our average age? Okay, cool. We've got a few that are up over 40, but no one really under 18. So. Okay. All right. And then we have our viewers, what, 70s? We have a few older people okay. that listen as well. So I don't know if my mom's a listener still or not. Probably not. She said she felt like she was listening in on a private conversation. Yeah. So. yeah. I'm glad she's not eavesdropping. <laughs> but so why, Y2K? It was... 99 rolling to 2000 and so the fear was did the computers know to yes. roll over yes. to 2000 or would they revert back and like just crash to year one year was one kind of the fear yeah yes and so there was lots of mixed things on this i know from my personal standpoint now i can appreciate this as a parent my mom was proactive and I think there's a balance. So Are your parents still married at this point? Still married at this okay. point. Yep. There is probably a couple, five more years before they got divorced. But so I think you have this in every relationship. There's someone who's thinking for the future and someone who's not wired as much that way. Sure. So it can be a good balance. Like the other day, my wife showed me a video about, you know, what you need to do as a family in year 2024, having, you know, having... EMP proof something for your car battery. Essential. Essential. A bunker is what this mindset would go to. And I was like, okay, you know, God didn't tell us to live in a bunker. Of course, He told us to be prepared, but, you know, not to the extent of just our whole life is in this preparation mindset. So my mom was thinking, hey, I've got a lot of mouths to feed. I need to be ready for whatever could happen. So we were canning eggs, we were canning chicken, we were canning eggs. eggs. Like you hard boiled them and like- I think we canned them that way and then she also found a way you could like, you can keep eggs for like seven years in a bucket. We were doing like crazy stuff. My grandma bought a little thing that you could take newspapers, get them wet and press them down and kind of dry them out and they become like a fire starter brick. I remember. You remember that? Well, so I was, so we met about 17 years ago. So that would have been in the year 2008, 2007. I feel like 2006 rings a bell. One of those years. It might have been 2006. But regardless, when we met and like one of the first times I went to your grandma and grandpa Steiner's house, I remember seeing those in the garage and you explained to me what they were. Yep. So at that point- They're probably still in there. We could probably go in for the podcast. Let's try to make that happen. I'll try to do that next time I'm over. We'll burn it. We'll burn it in my burn place it. as a segment. That'll be yeah. So, so yeah, so my mom was very much a prepper, very much. But she was doing it more so for the mindset, like it's a mom, she's got all these kids. So like for my wife, my wife is a prepper. If I said, let's build a bunker tomorrow, we would have a bunker. But I, you know, there's a give and take. So we have sleeping bags, you know. And I think it's just wise when the power goes out in the winter. Sure, we sure. Have something like that. So we have this stuff, but so that's why 2K in a nutshell. And a little backstory on my end of it. But, you know, you might be saying like, hey, what can I do to prepare for the future of my eyesight? That's a valid question. That's something I ask myself just about yeah. every day. Probably every day. What can I do for the 80 year old me that I've got one hand to wipe yeah, my I've got 
lenses. I've got no toes. I've got one hand and my eyes have suffered greatly from diabetic neuropathy. What do I do in this situation? What I want to do is I want to go online to enjoyoptical.com. What if the computer crashes? What can I do? That's a good point. Um, you're going to want to pack up your remaining gear and you're going to want to take off due west until you get to the state that looks like a pot. That's <laughs> Oklahoma. Now, near Oklahoma City, the big city, okay. there's a little suburb called Edmond. Okay. This place will still be open even during a government shutdown, an economic, I mean, EMPs are going off, no one's got power, no one's got electricity. There's gonna be a homeless looking man sitting at the front desk <laughs> at Enjoy Optical, and he is going to help you with all of your eyeglasses needs. Mark my words. Is his name Job? No. His name is Wash Jocox. And he will have faithfully been at that location for years at this point. <laughs> so, anyways, you wanna head on down there, but you know, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's why Amen. you should go online today and get your eyeglasses needs met right now. Did they roll out an EMP proof lens? They actually did. So the okay. lenses that they have are actually able to block out certain types of radiation and electromagnetic signals that are sent out from the EMP devices that will no doubt be administered by Mother Russia. And so the the frames and lenses there at Enjoy Optical are EMP proof, they are apocalypse proof, they're actually bulletproof as well, which is a big reason why I love them. It's just, you can wear them to the shooting range, you can wear them in a gunfight, and you can be confident that you're never gonna lose your eyesight. And so the guy there at the desk, like I said, Wash Joe Cox, he can help you out. But some of you might be saying, you know, Justin, last time you talked about the economy, and I did, I did. And I just stated some cold, hard facts. There's nothing we can do about facts, right? Mm -hmm. Feelings, eh, facts, those are the concrete facts. Facts are your friends, I've heard. Facts are your, they are your friends, Jerry. And here's the facts. We are all making more and spending less than we ever have before. There is a very capable and able-bodied young man with all of his full use of his faculties running this nation, and he has set this economy up for success. And so we are all living in the golden age of America. No one's got credit card debt. No one's got problems. Everyone's gainfully employed, and groceries are at an all-time record low. Everything. It's amazing. It's so incredible. chances are you can probably afford to take two weeks off work, travel to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and then pop down to Edmond and go to Enjoy Optical, drop a few thousand dollars on some high-end glasses. Most people can afford to do that. But if you're in the small, major small minority, I guess you would say, small minority of people in this country that can't afford to do that because of whatever reason, you can actually go to one of the $19,000 general pop-up locations nationwide. And they're gonna carry those same EMP-proof and apocalypse-proof, <laughs> bulletproof glasses that they do at the Enjoy Optical pop-up campuses. And the employees there at Dollar General are trained optometrists. You might not get that impression when you look at these people. You're gonna think, is this guy really a doctor? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So go up to him, open your eyes real wide, and say, <laughs> I'm here for an appointment for the Enjoy Optical pop up location, and they'll get you taken care of. <laughs> so you're going to use you're gonna use a code when you go there, and uh, they've got a special promotion going yep. on right now. Yep. So they've got a special promotion. They're, they're offering a one pair of frames and lenses for 99 cents. And when you get a second pair, they're gonna give you the second pair for 49 cents. So for a dollar and 48 cents, you're gonna get two pair of EMP proof, apocalypse proof, bulletproof glasses 
for a dollar and forty eight cents. It's it unbelievable. is a deal for real. It's unbelievable. And the code that you use when you go there is do you remember the code? I forget. I'm, let's just say I'm a listener. I forgot from last week. Yeah. So the code that you're gonna use. Did you forget? I did forget. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember the code. It's such a good code. It, the code, it, 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 the code it, 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 it describes the, the owner. It describes the, the owner. Shop. And yes, the reason sorry, it's so hard to remember is because this deal is only for our listeners. That's true. Only. That's yeah. it. This is not going out to the masses. This isn't. The code is it's the word homeless homeless which describes um, some of the appearances of some of the employees of the, of the pop-up locations and and the actual mother mother office so uh, stop in there and they'll get you taken care of today yeah so and and if y2k was coming up mm -hmm. in the future those glasses i'm sure would be able to just be capable of whatever but y2k th would throw at you yeah Absolutely. get a couple pair you're not going to be upset that you no. did. No. So, yeah, my Y2K experience was an interesting one. So, my dad... Is uh, your dad the prep route of your mom and dad? Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. My dad was just an interesting guy. And so, he loved the outdoors. He loved hunting, fishing, all these things. He was very... He's a very good hunter. Very good hunter. And so there was never any question like this guy's taking care of his family, a hardworking guy, but he was a little bit paranoid, a little bit paranoid that they were coming and you'd ask him who they are. And he said, you'll know when they get here. And it's, so it's just like this big smoke in here. And so it's like, it's the government, it's the aliens. I don't know what's happening, but Y2K was a big deal. I remember I was 10 years old. I'm in Aldi in Canton, in the old store. They used to have a, you know, up on Perry, corner of Perry and Tusk. They used to be oh, yeah. Apple. And so I'm, I'm in there with my mom and my dad. All of us kids are in there. And we've got three shopping carts filled to the brim with canned goods. Canned goods. So vegetables, um, you know, soups, anything that doesn't have a pop top. Because the fear of the pop top is if it freezes, it's gonna open by itself. And so it had to be something that you'd open with a can opener. You guys have multiple can openers in case of Oh opener. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We each had our own We each had our own can opener. And then so we've got all of these canned goods in the basement, all this food, freezers are full, we've got a generator, you went out and bought a generator for this, and we've got um, water, tons of water. And so my mom was saving apple juice containers because we all drank juice all the time because I have diabetes naturally. I'm drinking a lot of juice. <laughs> and so, you know, we got these juice containers and so they're putting some bleach in these, cleaning them out, filling them up with water. And they put a couple drops of bleach in the water to make sure it wouldn't go stale or spoil. I don't know what's happening, right? I just... <laughs> I just know I'm a kid I, I putting water of, bottles on a shelf. I never heard of bleach being a good thing to drink. And they put it in tap water. It's chlorine, right? So anyways, we're, uh, we're just loading stuff up. Y2K, it's coming. It's coming fast. We've got everything that we need. We've got a game plan similar to our friend John Whedon. I was going to try to give him a call tonight, <laughs> but he was unavailable for a call. So we're hoping in the next, coming weeks. Yeah. We're open next week to go to get John Whedon on the phone. So if anyone talks to him, let him know that we tried to reach out to him um, and we couldn't get through. But Do you think that um, – I, I bet John Whedon had quite a game plan for Y2K. Yeah, he's got a yeah. – yeah, he had a game plan for all kinds of different things. That, uh, yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to talk to him about. He has a whole book of game plans. So for life and you know, his son's Little League team, Y2K, it's all great. Right. Yeah. So anyways, we had all of this stuff ready to go. We've got all the things. And wouldn't you know it, Y2K turned out to be a total myth and it never happened. Yeah. Well, the downside was is we had hundreds of cans of food. <laughs> so what do you do with all this stuff that you wouldn't normally eat when you've got 
50 cans of tamales in your basement. What are you going to do? <laughs> and the answer is your mom packs them in your dad's lunch over the next year. He's getting tamales for lunch, cans of corn for lunch. He's eating his Y2K stockpile for like the next five years in his lunch. No. Every day. 100%. Yes. You're, so your dad didn't say, hey, we're going to just spread this out across the family. Like your mom's like, this was your idea. I mean, we ate the stuff that we would eat. Like he got okay. a bunch of like the canned fruit and stuff. Like kids like cocktail, oh. fruit cocktail. And like vegetables that we normally eat from a can like canned green beans Why or the something tamales? i think he looked at it and thought like there's carbs in here there's protein in here this is basically like a meal like that would have been how he approached it okay and so then with the water that water stayed in the basement for quite a while and then just one day we started bringing all the bottles up dumping them out in the yard and yeah hundreds of bottles hundreds of bottles of water dude that's unreal yeah real. one gallon bottles just dump them out in the side Man. yard dump them out in the side yard and so total total mess but yeah that was y2k but i remember sitting on the couch as a 10 year old and i'm clutching a toy pocket knife a toy like army knife it had a green handle and it was like spray painted silver and i'm just thinking to myself like we're gonna die we're gonna die <laughs> and sure enough, we didn't die. But I think that's where, like, these kind of things is where I got a lot of my paranoia from that I took into my adult life, which I've been able to, thankfully, work a lot of that stuff out. Yeah. Over this yeah. past year and a half, two years, but um, yeah, it was. Yeah, as a ten year old, you're very impressionable, and your dad tells you pretty much like, yeah, it's ending. Yeah. It's going down. So like, all right, well, gotta trust dad. If anything goes down, we got plenty of water, plenty of tamales and the generator, so we're going to be able to be just fine. So, no one ever thought 24 years later everything's absolutely fine. And you know what's wild about that too? You ever think about this like these people with these bunkers. Yeah. So, let's say you had a bunker and you had enough food to last 2 years. Mhm. Mm you know, you could pick up one little sickness and be done. Yeah. Or what happens after two years runs out? Mm -hmm. It's not like you're like, great, they rebuilt the Aldi's. We can go back and restock. Yeah. Because in your mind, it's all desolate. Mm -hmm. So now you've lasted two years and it's you and the aliens or them or they. Yeah. And it's, you know, Did you ever what's see the, the plan? What's, Did you ever what's see the plan movie? step two? Blast from the Past with Brendan yeah. Fraser. Oh, that yeah. is what happens in that movie. Yeah. Like, they're in this bunker for like 25 years and yep. they think the whole world's been destroyed and they go up there and they're like, whoa, like, so. That'd be you guys. Yeah, that would, like, what would have happened? Like, I don't know. That's the thing, like, people are, like, here's the deal. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not prepared for any kind of long-term thing, but, you know, if the power went out for a week, I could probably be just fine. But it comes to a point, too, with, like, the bunkers and stuff, like, what are we living for? Yeah. Like, if I've got to be underground for two years, I what's don't the live. point? Let the nuke take me out. What's the, yeah, what's the, the point The nuke can this? take us all out. What yeah. are we going to do? And we're going to be, me, I mean, we're rebuilding society? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I just don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah I'm, just I'm like, with you on that. I'm with you. Know, you. Years ago, I'd be like, we've got to survive. But now I'm just like, eh. Like, heaven's going to be so much better than this. Mm -hmm. and we'll be just fine. And I think the one thing we're going to look into doing this year, because we've had our power go out a couple times where we're at. And um, for me, summertime, you know, of course, it's an inconvenience to be hot. I grew up with no air conditioning. My parents had air yeah. conditioning in their bedroom. We suffered. We had fans yeah. on. Same with us. Same you, with us. You'd fall asleep because you were so hot, you just kind of like pass out. Mm -hmm. It built character. Now, sometimes my kids are so used to comfortable temperatures that I'm like, you know, listen, guys, you're complaining because the air is too cold in the back. I would have loved to have air in the back of our van. Our van didn't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Or if it did, it was like warm air. And it was in the front, it didn't reach the back. So, but we're talking about maybe this year putting like a hand pump 
for water out, outside. That's a great. Because we have a well, which we love, but when the power goes out, it's like, crap. You know, the kids got to go to the bathroom. I'm fine out there hand pumping a bucket. We can flush the toilet. Mm -hmm. I like that because it gives you capabilities outside of power. So there's an element that I think it makes sense. Sometimes we're so dependent on the power that it's like, yeah, we should probably have a little bit of independence from electricity. I would love a hand pump. So you have to yeah. let me know how that goes putting yeah. that in. Yeah. I'm getting pricing out. I'll keep you posted. Yeah. For sure, you, can come, you can come down there if, pump they, it up. if they don't get you. Yeah. If they don't come for me. Yeah, I'll be right here. We'll, if they if they do invade and the apocalypse happens, we'll be here every Monday night. Yeah. At Ten o'clock. You guys will upload every Thursday. Still, we'll we'll make everything will be the same. It'll be so, the same. There'll be zombies clawing at the window. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by that zombie. <laughs> He's from the Narcs. <laughs> you can tell because of the nacho cheese on him. <laughs> we got a song for you this week, viewers. <laughs> You can count on us, apocalypse or not, we'll be here. You've got a friend in us. That's right. Yeah, we're that's here right. for you guys. We're here for you guys. Dude, that's so, so funny. Y2K, yeah. if you, yeah, maybe if you're out there listening, you need to share a funny story or a funny, a funny thing that your family did for preparation. Yeah, let us know. We'll read it on the pod. So, we had a few did, comments. Obviously, we have some comments or unsubscribers. Um... You know, I didn't check our unsubscribers, but let's see here. Um, view channel, still got the same amount of subscribers. Uh, viewers, John Whedon. Oh, we got a comment from our uh, mobile trades. My friend, my friend Chris, he says, Tans is amazing. Try their cream cheese egg rolls. No thanks, Chris. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you broke that one, I'll eat it. Maybe we should try to get Tans to sponsor us. We could say, hey, someone recommended the cream cheese egg rolls. Because that's probably, yeah, I mean, if they threw two cream cheese egg rolls and we'll say, hey, we'll give you a shout out. We've got 13 faithful, 12, 13 subscribers. The 12 disciples, yeah, that's what I was say. So they're locked in. These 12 are locked in. I mean, they in. might leave. We don't know. They might leave. So we don't even know. If you're out here and you're not subscribed, just subscribe. What's the big deal? Uh, we also got a comment um, from uh, another user that says, you remember that time in arachnophobia when there was a big spider and you killed it? That was awesome. Dash, Chris Farming, SNL. So it's when he's doing those interviews, when he's interviewing people. He's like, you remember oh, yeah. when you did this? That was awesome. And that'd be like all he said. So yeah, some of those old SNL skits are just like good, clean fun. Oh yeah. There's nothing wrong with them. That's hard to find nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's either like sexual jokes or a bunch Vulgar of cursing. cursing. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm probably not showing a lot of that to my kids. It'd just be too much to try to explain to them, but of like why this is funny. But like to me, some of that stuff is so funny. So, so two comments. Thank you for those who commented. Chris, thank you. Maybe we'll try tans. Yeah. Well, maybe not. But yeah. Anyways, um, and Chris has got a little bit of an Asian. He's got a little Asian. He's Filipino. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably why he likes it. Okay. Well, maybe we need to give it a whirl. I mean, the fact that it's around and you see people wrapped in that drive-through a few times. Um. Maybe we'll have to go there on like a Monday night before we do the pod and we'll just do a little quick video. Cream cheese. So maybe, yeah, we'll have to see if that's like a standard on their menu. I doubt they have an online menu, Jerry. I doubt it. But anyways. Let's uh, hit our second podcast. What's that? Or sorry, our second segment. Second segment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we we'll, close, we'll close with this. Um, I was at the park and I just saw an animal that I hate and I just said to my, I, well I messaged Jerry and I said, hey, this week let's do um, Northeast Ohio animals that we hate, top five. So I'll start it, you want to start it out? Go ahead, start it out, look at the menu real quick. Yep. This menu actually looks fairly decent, they've got 4.1 reviews. Cream cheese egg rolls are my favorite. 
Other than that, avoid at all costs. Who said that? Fire virus. Cream cheese egg rolls are my favorite. Highly recommend. Yeah. Looks like the cream cheese egg rolls are a hit. Huh. The old cream cheese. Yeah, maybe we'll give it a whirl. Thanks, Chris. All right, we got about 15 minutes left, so we'll catch this last segment here. All right, so. The least favorite. My least favorite Northeast Ohio natives animals. So I'm going to go with just a nuisance. This isn't like I hate this animal, but it's just a nuisance of an animal is the woodpecker. Really? Yes. Most Saturday mornings, a woodpecker pecks on the metal chimney cover. <laughs> First time it happened, I was sitting on the couch with my kids, and they're like, "What's what is that, Daddy?" And I was like, "You guys wait right here." I didn't know what it was, so I go outside, and I'm like, "What the heck is making that noise?" I look up there, and it's a woodpecker <laughs> onto the metal, and I'm like. He just keeps going. Like he doesn't recognize that this is this is metal. It's metal. What are we doing? So just a nuisance. Do you think maybe he drank from the city of Maslin water sewer system? Yeah, yeah. It was John Wheaton's personal pet. He used to sit <laughs> on his shoulder when he was in his office. So yeah, I don't know. Wow, what that's a crazy was, woodpecker. But he just pounds on metal every Saturday morning. And he might do it during the week and I just don't know about it, but I'm like, why? Yeah. So like, this past Saturday, this past you're, Saturday you're in the shower it. filming a polo for It was me, probably like eight o'clock. Going nuts. That's before the polo. I was actually in the kitchen doing something. I heard the noise and I was like, stupid woodpecker. I just went about my day. Yeah, so I don't know why or what's wrong with this thing, so. Wow. Mine, Number I, don't, I don't know the point of these things. Truthfully, I don't. I don't know why God made them. He made them for some reason. But ticks cannot mm. stand ticks. And what's crazy is as a kid, we never had ticks. I don't remember ever getting a tick. And we were outside all the time. Now, they're all over the place. I had one last year. I had one drill its way into the, one of the, the cheeks. Really? Yep. What'd you have to do? Pinch it off? I was, yeah, I was shower at the Y, and I was like, did I get a splinter in my butt? And so I turned around and looked, sure enough, see this thing sticking out. I'm like, you stupid, stupid tick. Mm. So I got a pair of tweezers and I just squeezed and just ripped. So I took a good chunk of skin and stuff out with it, and then had my brother do the final just inspection and kind of make sure everything's cleaned out. Clean the butt cheek out. Clean the butt cheek out. Yeah, my oh, dad. Yeah. My dad had a tick on his back one time. Well, he thought it was just like a like a cyst or something growing, and it was on him for a while. And he was like, "Hey, check it." Talk to my mom. He's like, "Check this out on my back," and she's like, "That's a tick." And it was like swollen, filled oh, with blood. Man. And so they got it, but it's that's nasty. Did your mom do surgery? Um, no, I think they were able to get it pretty easily. I don't okay. think it was a big deal. I just think it was in like a weird spot on your back. You know, I don't know. Unless you're using one of those sponges on a stick, sometimes it's hard to reach. Yeah, there's some parts you're your flexible. Body that I'm, you can't reach. I'm getting my shoulders. Maybe your shoulders. Maybe. If you're not super tight. Yeah, sometimes just my bicep and that's <laughs> it. So, um, yeah, my number four, I'm going to go with. The possum. Hmm. The possum is my number four. I just hate possums. They're nasty. I saw one just walking down the road at me. Like, I was outside doing something at night. I had this spotlight that I got. One time I took it to the beach, the spotlight, and this redneck guy, he was like, was that you down there with your spotlight? And I was like, yeah. He's like, that thing was so bright. I thought that was the Dagum World Center tribute light. <laughs> and I was like, no, that was my spotlight. But I shined that spotlight down the road one night, and this nasty possum's just walking its way up right to me. And I'm like, oh, no, get him. I chased it out. Of thing. But, yeah, they're gross. So Did you know that those things, I think, are one of the best things for eating ticks? Really? They feed on ticks. I just learned that. I was like, okay, I need to let the possums live. 
I'll let them, like, I'm not out there shooting them, but they're just gross. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is, um, I think this is Northeast Ohio primarily. This would be, is this your number? This is my number four. Okay. Wolf spiders. You got a lot of bugs going on. A lot of bugs. And I'm not like, spiders don't freak me out. I just crush them. It's not a big deal. But dude, those things can get huge. Yeah, they're giant. And they're just crawling all over the place and everything. Yeah, they just, I don't know. Again, I don't know why, why they exist. Yeah. They do. Yeah, spiders are number gross. four. When I was a kid, we used to fight spiders. I used to crawl underneath the porch and catch them. But never like giant ones. They were always like this big. Oh, yeah. So, just playing with bugs as a kid. Yeah, I don't, bugs don't bother me. Yeah, I was over at my sister's house this week and we caught a toad. My nephew thought it was like the coolest thing. So yeah, we let it jump around on the deck and, you know, he keeps, yeah, he keeps falling over. Or he's being rough with it, but it lived. So. <laughs> yeah, my number three is geese. And this is the animal that set me off. I was making a video to you actually when I had this idea because it hissed at me. Oh, I yeah. was walking and it started hissing. I, was just, I just said, nope, no way. We do not do that. And I just kept walking right towards it. Like, you want to go? <laughs> I'm 6'2", weigh 235 pounds. You're, you're a goose. And then it cracks. You're hunt that thing. It cracks me up when these things are walking across the street just like real slow. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not slowing down. So. Nope. And then it'll we'll just like, it'll like hurry out of the way. Oh yeah! It's like it knows somehow. It knows that like you can't touch me. Oh yeah! And I'm like, Arrogant. oh really? Okay, yeah. okay. Let's see. Let's see about this. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, I still like geese. I don't like their attitude. It's not the animal itself. And like, if it was being territorial because it had like a nest or something, sure. But if I'm just walking close to you and I'm walking on the walking path at a public park. I'm sorry, do you pay the taxes? No, <laughs> I do. You don't. My taxes are paying to clean off your crap off the wall. Get yeah. out of the way. Out. Yes. So we don't play these games, Goose. So. Dude, you nailed it. Okay, so that was going to be maybe my number two. I'll just keep it as my, I'll keep it at three and we'll continue that. I've had two run-ins with geese in the last handful of years. Well, the one was longer ago. I'm, I'm coming off of Fulton Road and I'm going 77 North and um, it's that on-ramp. It's a long on-ramp and so I just pick up steam and this is back when I had my little red car and I'm probably going 70 miles an hour and this was a highlight moment for me because I've had a few times where these Like a geese, highlight of your life? Oh, just, just listen. So it's in the morning, I got my cup of coffee, sunroof is down, cruising. Two geese fly down, these stupid things land on the road, literally right in front of me. Bam, I hit these things. And they land on the highway? On the on-ramp, getting onto the highway. And literally they flip and just somersaults through the air and I see them just doo -doo, right behind the car. Dude, I was so pumped. I'm like, for all those times I've stopped for you guys, you stupid geese. Same thing, they know, you yeah. can't hit me. Yeah. And so th what do they think? I'm going to slam my brakes on? Nope. Full send. And I'm not advocating the, the injury of animals, but no. I'm also not going to hurt myself oh, to save no. the life of a, of a goose that no. is just on a pride trip. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. You've yeah. got to go. If you're landing on an on-ramp, I'm coming. I'm going 70. What am I going to do? Swerve and hit the, hit the guardrail yeah. and get injured and ruin my car? They would love you to do that. No. Yep. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on a straight path. And if you're in the straight path, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll see you in heaven. You remember that episode of The Office where Dwight brings in a, a dead goose? <laughs> a Christmas <laughs> goose. <laughs> like he just hit it this morning or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Dude, I, had, I took the kids, Rowan and Sophia, to um, Monument Park because there's all mm -hmm. the ducks and stuff over there. I'm like, hey. As a kid, my mom would take me there, grandma would take me there, and we'd feed the ducks with bread. So we went and bought this cheap bread at Aldi's for like a buck. We go there. Well, the ducks are overpowered now by the geese. And I'm like, listen, we're not feeding the geese. We are here to feed the ducks. The ducks are nice. They don't come after you. 
So you pulled so, out your 45 caliber pistol and just started blasting geese out the water. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. I was packing some heat and so we're feeding the ducks and you know I'm trying to just keep feeding the ducks. Same thing. These geese think they're gonna come after my kids. And I'm like, absolutely not. I'm like, I might be at a park, but if I have to, you might be dinner. Yeah. I'm just I'm not gonna deal with a stupid goose. They're just chasing so my arrogant kids. and they're so and they're like aggressive. running the ducks off and the ducks can't get fed and I'm like, this is not cool. Yeah, and like so, I said, it's one thing if there's a nest and there are eggs, and I understand like the maternal instinct and the yes. maternal instinct yes. to protect the little ones. Yes. I get it. But when you're just being greedy, and when you're just trying to steal bread from ducks, and when you're just crossing the road like you own the place, I'm sorry, it's time to go. I know yes. you gotta go. And we've all been there before in Northeast Ohio, and you're like, oh, maybe this is another construction zone, or maybe this is just a typical Northeast Ohio moment with driving. And then you get up there and you realize like, oh, the reason that all this line of traffic is stopped is because of, you know, these geese that are crossing the road, taking their time. And you're like, I'd just go full send. So risky. I don't care. But, yeah. And, you know, I forgot to mention the sponsor of this segment here. So maybe you are that goose that Jerry hit going up on the on ramp <laughs> at 70 miles an hour. And after that incident, your back was just kind of out of alignment. That's when you need to fly on over to adjust chiropractic in Canton <laughs> and see if you can get the, uh, the on ramp special, which is seeing the intern and she's got some strong hands that are just gonna crack you back into place. So they'll get you taken care of over there. They do a fantastic job. And like we talked about earlier, reasonably priced. They see the whole family and you can even sneak in on your friend's appointments with them just for fun. So yeah, adjust chiropractic in Canton and uh, you can use the code Amish hands for $10 off your first visit. So you can use that code up to nine times. And I got to give a shout out to adjust for this week because our oldest has been sick for a stretch. So we were able to get in there on a whim on a Saturday morning. Really? Texted Dr. B. He's like, get, come on in here between these hours. We needed to go back today and was able to fit us in on a whim. So I got to give some props out. Wow. He made my oldest daughter's prayer tonight. She was just praying, like thanking God for the day and different stuff. And like, thank you for Dr. Brian being able to help me get fixed up so I can feel better. Wow. This is just heart touch. I mean, it's just heartfelt. Yeah. That's the kind of care you're going to get from a place like that. Yeah. You might get roughed up from the Amish hands, but you're going to get that level of care and compassion. Somewhere over at the Monument Park tonight, there's a, there's an old goose that's nested up in the woods. That's also saying it's prayers and it's saying, thank you for the hands that fixed me up in my moment of need after I got pounded at 70 miles an hour and I flew on over to adjust chiropractic and Dr. Brian was able to adjust my goose body and fix me up. So yeah, maybe I mean, they actually see pets as well. So maybe you've got a dog that needs adjusted or a pet goose or a pet snake or pet skunk or something. They, they see literally the whole family. So the family plan includes your pets. So keep that in mind <laughs> when you're signing up for the family plan. So yeah, go down. And no again, limits either on what type of pet or amount. Or amount, yeah. So whatever. If you've got, if your hamster has babies and all of a sudden you're running around with ten baby hamsters, bring them in. Doctor Brian will, they'll put them all down there and get them all adjusted for you. What a place. So speaking of hamsters, um, you true? ever have hamsters grown up? Um, I think we only had guinea pigs. I think my sister said guinea pigs. Yeah, my brother had some hamsters, and he got sold two boy hamsters. Well, then we had 10 or 15 hamsters a few weeks later, because it turned out one of them was a girl. And so he's got all these hamsters. These things stink. Is this your number two? No, no. This oh, has this nothing is just to do with okay. the story. But these things stink. And somehow one of the hamsters escapes and crawls into the heating ductwork in the house no. and dies. And so it reeks. And every time the heater would kick on, you'd smell dead hamsters. So this is a whole ordeal. 
and my dad trying to get this cleaned out of there and everything else. So my dad naturally hates these hamsters, right? Oh. So, like, yeah, I, the whole house is just stinking up the joint. Yeah, and it was and never supposed to be this. Is. It was just supposed to be, hey, my friend gave me these two hamsters. Can we keep them? They're both boys. Okay, fine, fine. Then you got 15. Like, you didn't sign up for this. I can see where my dad's at, right? And so we go on a trip to England because, again, we got free tickets. My mom's family's from England. So we go there in the summer. We go for, like, two weeks or a month or something like that. My dad's at home. My brother's like, he. Yeah, can you please take care of the hamsters? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I will. So we get back. There's no hamsters in the cage anymore. And my brother's like, what happened, Dad? And my dad's like, um, yeah, there's a guy at work. His son really into hamsters. I gave him, gave him to his son. And I said, oh, okay. And he's like, I, I think they'll just be happier there, and they, they really want it on, so it'll be good. And I was like, okay, okay. And my dad's like, Justin. And I like go over and talk to him. He's like, I flushed all of them down the toilet. You should, have seen them. you should have seen them fight against the water. And I was like, I'm like 10 years old. I'm like, this is messed up. <laughs> but that's just, that's, that's what happened. That's what your so, dad did. Yeah. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. So anyways, all right. My uh, number two. 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 My number two animal is the raccoon. Oh, yeah. Because I have chickens. And I had a lot more chickens, but raccoons got to them. Mm -hmm. And so then I started trapping the raccoons, and I trapped six raccoons in six days. Took a bunch of them out. But yeah, they would get in the chicken coop. They'd pull out one chicken at a time, brutally murder these things. Like, they are nasty animals. Yeah. I opened up the coop one night. One of them snuck in there during the day and hid in there for the chickens to come in at night. Dude, that is messed up. Messed up. So then I lock the chickens up in there, and I just hear all this ruckus coming from inside. And so I like put my ear up to the coop, and I'm like, that's... And I hear growling. I was like, that's not chickens. Open it up, and I see this raccoon with a mouthful of feathers. Look at me. And I was like, I'm sorry, friend. You got to go. How'd you take care of them? Sword? I... Uh, yeah. Basically. You lovingly trap him and relocate him. I lovingly relocated him and actually took him up to the Cleveland Metropolitan Zoo. And he's over there that you can go visit him from the hours of 8 to 5. Um, <laughs> Those calling hours. Monday through Sunday. So head on down to Cleveland Zoo. They're sponsoring this animal relocations uh, segment. <laughs> yeah, that's my number two. What do you got? Dude. Okay, it, it was actually harder than I thought because I'm like, raccoons make that list. I just had to relocate one as well to the Cleveland Zoo last week. Good man. Um, yeah, same thing. Uh, my number two. Yeah, I'm going to stay with this. Groundhogs. I don't know their They're point. Nasty. They get into your garden. Yeah. They dig holes. They dig under my shed. I they dig under, under a shed. shed. Yeah. They. I don't know. Like, I've tried groundhog before. Maybe I've never had it prepared the right way. Maybe I've never prepared it the right way. But I'm just like, man, this should be good to eat. But you know what you do? You just have to relocate them. Up and to the Cleveland Zoo. <laughs> up to the Cleveland Zoo. And they're just, yeah, I don't understand their purpose. But they are, they're smart. Because they they're that thing like hard to relocate. They're hard to relocate because you know you're trying to go in very lovingly after this thing, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> you know you you can see them in the window, and it's almost like they have this sense like a human has seen me and wants to take me back to the zoo, mm -hmm. and it's like you walk outside and they're gone. So you'll be able, to, you know stealth like when you're going to relocate them yeah yeah i was trying to tranquilize one and relocate it recently and i was able to do that so yeah what do you use for tranquilizers uh a 22 caliber tranquilizer tranquilizer cool yeah cool yeah that works well yeah it was good <clears throat> i relocated a um a um a feral bobcat last week that with a 22 tranquilizer. You had a bobcat in your property? My son calls it a bobcat. Oh, a feral. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, feral bobcat, bobcat that just bobcat. needed to. It escaped the zoo and just needed to go back up. So you just drove it back up to. Just the drove it back up. Yeah. So I go up probably about two, three times a week, just relocating animals. Yeah. You're together, just like our. Sponsor. Do you hear a funny story? Last year, I'll never forget this. I'm driving through Talmadge, and traffic again stopped coming this way, and there's someone in the road doing this, and I'm like, "Is there an accident? What's happening?" Lo and behold, I see this person trying to get this. There's a groundhog in the road, shooing it away. They get this thing successfully across the road. Mind you, they've stopped me, a truck, flying down the road. Traffic behind me stopped. And of course, you know, they're they're clapping and there's some people like thumbs up after they relocate and I'm like, that groundhog was about 10 seconds. It had been 10 seconds later, I was going full steam over it. But this car happened to get there quick enough to like stop and just kind of wave down traffic and just shoo this thing across the road. Yeah. Unreal. I remember as a kid, my dad would often jump over the curb to the Sport Explorer so we could grab groundhogs and relocate them up to the Cleveland Zoo. So that was a memory of mine from my childhood. <laughs> I relocated a possum one time, going about 80 in my first car. Remember the one that we blew up the exhaust the one time? Yeah, the Acura. Accu truck. Yeah. And um, there was just a possum center of the road, and I was just like, or no, not center of the road, other lane. And I was like, I need to relocate this to the zoo. You have to rescue it. Just a quick little veer, and I had like rescue a little it. just a rescue trap to kind of bring it up with me. You're a saint. So I do. Yeah. Midnight rescuing possums. Good man. Yeah, my number one, my number one least favorite animal in Northeast Ohio is a snake of any kind. Dude. I hate snakes. I try to, when I'm on the lawnmower, I try to just make sure I can grab them and relocate them. So, yeah. <laughs> I just, I cannot stand snakes. They creep me out. I had one lunge at me. When I'm out in the yard, I was I was over there. What kind of a snake was it? It was a black, I think it was uh, some kind of garter snake. I don't think it was poisonous, but it was big. And so I gently took my shovel and I relocated it with the shovel because it lunged at me. And on was, the mower? No, I was Are off the mower okay. at this point. I had the shovel and I was like, doing some work in this ditch I have over there. And it, it like, it like hissed at me and lunged. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta make a trip to the Cleveland Zoo here this <laughs> afternoon. So I did it. So. Yeah. yeah, that's impressive. Dude, I, I met a lady years ago, a couple years ago, I think I told you this, that they rescued a, a buzzard. The buzzard hit a building in Cleveland. It froze, apparently buzzards when they <clears throat> when yeah it's a buzzard is it a buzzard no what are the turkey, turkey vultures mm -hmm. turkey vultures when they hit a building and they kind of get stunned they can actually freeze to death hmm so because apparently they can't like move their wings and whatever else so she got a phone call she drives there gets this turkey vulture puts him in a cage puts him in the basement of her parents house and she's our age and this thing's throwing up all over in the basement. Apparently it's in this cage, it kind of warms up and just starts going nuts. Well now they're looking to free it back out into the wild so this thing's going crazy in there. So she grabs it with her like a big blanket and wraps it up in her coat and literally takes it and releases it outside in the wild. That's I'm insane. like, bless you. That poem you read earlier, that was my exact thought for that turkey vulture. What poem? The Donald Trump poem. Oh, yeah. Keep you from evil. Yeah, keep, yeah. Let no weapon formed against it prosper. So. So snakes are on my list, but the, the animal that I don't understand, and this is gonna offend people and it's okay. It's Northeast Ohio. It's gotta be a Northeast Ohio thing. I know it's all over, but just stay with me. I've heard it referred to as a Cleveland mix. 
I've heard it referred to as a Canton mix. It's our very own pit bull. Yeah. I, I told the story a while back about that interaction right in front or I, the thing I observed in front of the family dollar. I'm in Home Depot with my kids. And, How long ago? A um, couple of nights ago. Okay. A couple of nights ago. I'm in there with them and they're not in the cart. And now mind you, all these facilities anymore are saying like, hey, only service animals. You know, they just have to because it's yeah. getting out of control. There is a pit not on a leash mm. in Home Depot with the store owner or with the with this owner. I don't trust any dog because my wow. kids don't know them. You know, the dog doesn't know my kids, not familiar, unfamiliar area, noises, sat, all this stuff. So I was ready to have to relocate it to the Cleveland. That's zoo. what I was going to suggest. And because this thing kind of like got a little bit excited and I was like, you guys stay right by me. Don't go over there at all, period. Mm -hmm. And then someone else came through with another dog, not a service animal. Perfect. Perfect. And so these dogs are trying to, the owners are trying to get the dogs to kind of like shake hands. Mm -hmm. Well, the one is like ready to eat the other one. So I don't understand that pet or that, an that Northeast animal, truthfully. Yeah, I can't stand them. I didn't know that was an option. That would have <laughs> that would have made my list for sure. I don't I think was it was an option. Like wild animals, but that is a <laughs> that, <laughs> that is a wild animal. We end up talking about that in Sunday school, and it's just like you start. When we Googled dogs outlawed in a, in United States, and pit bull is number one on the list. It's not outlawed by like you're not allowed to have them in this state or that state, but each city makes its own rules. So like in the city of Cincinnati, you're not allowed to own a pit bull because of incidences. Some people are like, oh, pit bulls are fine. Why did the city of Cincinnati ban them? They didn't ban beagles. They didn't ban labs. Why did they ban pit bulls? Right? And so it's like, use I your know. head, people. I know. And I know. Yeah. And so. I love, like, I will say this. So I grew up with dogs my entire life we might get to the place where we might entertain a dog, but right now we have kids. We don't need to add. There's no need to add more stuff to my plate or my wife's plate. If I got your kids a pit bull puppy for Christmas, <laughs> would you let them keep it? <laughs> Think about it. We were at the, when we were in Florida, we were at a park and there's two puppies that came over and they don't know this, but they were both pits. Mm -hmm. They were teeny tiny little things. Yeah. But I still have my eye on these because I'm like, I don't even know if I can trust you at this age. And I'm like, it's kind of worrisome that there's two puppies missing. Where's mom? Yeah. So I was on the lookout for mom because I'm like, I might have to drive from Florida to Cleveland. All the way to the Cleveland Zoo. <sighs> what a Just drive. to relocate what mom. What a drive. But yeah, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I would not receive it as a gift. Mm, that's sad. So, but I just don't understand it. Too much, too much risk for me. Yeah. All the risk, no reward. And you know what's fascinating too? And maybe I don't know. Maybe this is maybe maybe we can we should listen to our viewers. If you have a pet out there, it's funny that you know. It seems like people who have that type like to really sleep with that dog. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What What do you think's going on? I don't know. I don't want to know. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. It's a weird thing. The pit, so, the pit, the pit is my culture. the pit culture is my number one. That's a good one. And that's a good so, one to end it on. Anything else you want to add this week? Great job on this song. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. I'll put it here for you guys. So at the end, I'll put a, another recorded version of it. So enjoy. Let us know what you think about the song. Let us know the animals you dislike that we missed. Yeah. Peace, guys. See ya. Peace.
I'm new to Trail Whispers and I'm nine episodes behind. There's these guys, Jay Rich and Jerry. They're just talking all the time, but it doesn't really sit with me quite right. They don't really like the things I like, but I keep accidentally hitting play and listening to them talk all night. I wake up kind of happy and I wake up kind of bold. I realize these guys are funny even though they're really old. I kind of like the ads they read, but I don't know how this stuff gets sold. I just hope these companies realize that they don't fit the mold. Everybody's telling me that they're doing so well. I try to trust them honestly, but find it hard to tell. They need help, they need your help. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Tell yourself, say it out loud. I'll like and subscribe right now. I tend to forget they're still only quite new. In a way, it makes sense why they don't have the views. They've got time. It takes time. I'm all caught up on episodes. It was a funny, funny time. Those guys, Jay Rich and Jerry, they're so handsome, they're so kind. My friends tell me I'm crazy, say I take it way too far. Cause I told them that it's over if we can't listen in the car. I'm loving this new podcast and I think that it's the best. That last episode I listened to was better than the rest. There's just so much that they have to say in far too little breath. So I can't wait for more new episodes, we'll see what we get next. Everybody's telling me that they're doing so well I try to trust them honestly but find it hard to tell They need help, they need your help Like and subscribe, like and subscribe Tell yourself, say it out loud I'll like and subscribe right now <laughs> Woo! You like that, Dude, huh? that is awesome! Yeah, good. Man, that's impressive. I had fun with it. Dude, that is seriously legit.